hello and welcome to this video in this video we're going to talk about abnormal vaginal bleeding as usual don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and uh, leave a comment below if you like what you see and uh, let's get straight on to this video so it's important to take a good history they may present before their first period which is before menarche they may present uh, during their reproductive age um, but they are not pregnant, so they may still have some bleeding. They may present whilst be pregnant with abnormal bleeding. And they may also present um, after menopause with abnormal bleeding. So what questions um, you should be asking a patient with that present with um, vagi abnormal vaginal bleeding? Now, obviously, we discussed about the categories before our first periods, during productive period and um, after menopause okay each one of them have different scenarios but the questions you're gonna ask are generally generally like this so how long has this uh, issue uh, be ongoing with the bleeding how long is you know this has been ongoing and then you need to ask them how frequently this is happening if they can't answer this question the volume of a uh, of um, the bleeds normally i tend to ask them in teaspoon but you can use tablespoon or any easy way for the patients to describe the amount of bleeding they are encountering um so and also it's important to know when does this bleeding happen um obviously if the patient is sexually active you want to know uh, if this is happening during um you know sexual intercourse or during their menstrual period so just to have a classifications now let's talk about associated symptoms um i always tend to ask the patient if they are experiencing any pain down below so pelvic pain ask about discharge which is very important um, any painful urination any lower back pain any itchiness down below and also obviously um, pain during intercourse if possible ask them questions about their medical history sexual history and um, drug history so a simple way to find out a little bit about their medical history could be asking them if they are up to date with their smears any um, history or previous history of uh, HPV infections that will point you towards a form of you know, cervical cancer or vaginal cancer. Um, are they, is the patient immunosuppressed, um, you know, HIV on, or uh, immunosuppressant drugs? And obviously any history of cancer. So in regards to the sexual history, um, ask them the date of their last uh, sexual contact. Uh, a number of partners in the last three to six months um, if possible gender um, was he is are they committed to a long-term relationship casual relationship and um, any partners that uh, they were positive for STIs um, are they using any condoms at the moment and the type of contact in regards to the drug history I just tend to ask the patients if they are taking any contraception and um, if the patient is close to the menopause or perimenopause i always ask them if they are on any hrt um, which are hormone replacement therapy because it's quite common that patient would present with vaginal bleeding within the first four to six months especially if they're starting in hrt so it's important to again know the context of the patient you're dealing with Let's talk about examination. So um, examination should mainly involve um, inspecting the vulva, the perineum, uh, the inner region, and just to rule out any, any non-vaginal causes of the, of the bleeding. So if the patient is um, hemodynamically unstable, such as you know, having heavy bleeding and, and suspecting ectopic pregnancy, obviously you send them to the hospital. If the patient is, um, you know, generally well, the bleeding is mild, and um, you are able to do the examination, it's important to be able to perform a bimanual examination to look for anything, um, you know, anything abnormal there. 
and um, if you have the ability just uh, do a quick speculum examination to uh, look at the service for any type of polyps, any uh, sign of bleeding, anything like that. And then when you're happy, you need to think about what to do after perform this examination. So investigations. Obviously, the most simple one you can do is a quick um, pregnancy test. If it's positive, well, the patient is pregnant. If, if it's negative, obviously, you can carry on with further investigation. Um, do a blood test to look for any sign of inflammatory markers, uh, any sign of anemia. Um, you could do like specific hormones such as the luteinizing hormone, uh, follicle stimulating hormone, estrogen, androgen, you know, um, mainly just looking at any cause, hormonal causes for the bleeding. Um, if you think the patient may have a form of STI after you ask the patient, you know, um, some um, sexual health kind of questions you I generally tend to um, send the patient to uh, to the gum clinic or to the sexual health clinic and uh, so they can get the appropriate type of care um, an important investigation to do with any patient that presents with abnormal bleeding is to do a transvaginal ultrasound uh, you send the patient uh, for an ultrasound transvaginal which is the first line uh, for women that present with uh, abnormal bleeding um, and obviously like i said if there's any indication for anything more sinister more urgent you send them to the hospital and uh, or epau if uh, that is a pregnant lady so let's quickly discuss um differential in regards to bleeding so we can discuss them with um, let's classify into postcoital intermenstrual bleeding and uh, postmenopausal bleeding now if a bleeding occurs um, postcoital um, so basically um, bleeding after intercourse um, so you, you need to think along the side of um, cervical ectropion cervical cancer gonorrhea chlamydia and vaginitis Obviously, hopefully you've been able to get a good history and you can um, manage the patient appropriately. Um, if, the, if the bleeding occurs um, in intermenstrual, so during the period or in between periods, um, like we discussed, you need to think about contraception. Uh, one of them being the marina coil, um, ovulation, miscarriage, gonorrhea, Chlamydia, uh, uterine fibroid, uh, and uh, malignancy, like we said, cervical cancer, cancer, vaginal cancer. The last thing to consider as a differential for postmenopausal bleeding, so bleeding that occurs after menopause, could be vaginal atrophy, um, patient on HRT and malignancy such as uterine cancer cervical cancer or vaginal cancer that's it for today i hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions any suggestions and um, i'll see you guys in the next video